some manufacturers are able to make some of the most ridiculously luxurious cars on the planet. But that level of luxury comes at a price. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 cars that come from those expensive luxury car manufacturers that you can buy for reasonable prices. And when I say reasonable, these are the cheapest offerings you can get from each of those manufacturers. How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Don't forget that in the UK's so price in other countries might be different. And when you buy a second-hand car, maintenance repairs, insurance, rosettes, all that good stuff is important to remember. In the comments down below, please let me know what your personal favorite luxury car brand is. The number one luxury car brand in the entire world, what is it according to you? If you enjoy this content and want to see more like it, do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> I'm not sure many brands are as synonymous with luxury in the car world as Rolls Royce is. You've got new cars starting at a minimum of around a quarter of a million pounds with some of the highest levels of luxury you'll ever find on wheels and spec options that go above and beyond what is attainable in multiple lifetimes for the average person. So then spending less than £10,000 to get into a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow seems pretty reasonable, I would say, as these start at around £8,000 and generally sit around the £15,000 mark. The Silver Shadow is quite an old car, harking from the 1960s originally, but at the time it was the height of luxury, with its wafty 6.8 litre V8 that produces 190 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in a sedate time of 11.3 seconds. It had the largest production run of any Rolls Royce to date, and even featured on a British stamp because it was so iconic. It was a big technological shift forward for the company, with features like disc brakes appearing for the first time, and though it doesn't have maybe as many fun extras as a new Rolls Royce, having been driven around in one you do feel very regal sitting in the back. It's an old car so expect it to run as a classic labour of love rather than as daily driver, but watch for rust and paint corrosion as these are telling signs of structural issues. Bentley has also been a front runner in the luxury car space ever since its inception all the way back in the early 1900s. Today of course you might know the Bentayga, the Continental GT and the Flying Spur, but back in the mid 1980s Bentley offered an entry level car named the 8, which is depreciated enough that today you will find them listed from around £9,000 to get into them, while they are many available at the £15,000 mark. This British full-size luxury car has a 6.8 litre V8 engine that produces 240 brake horsepower, which floats it from 0 to 60 in 11.1 seconds. It was based on the Mulsanne, but had fewer features to help it be the introductory model to the brand, and keep the price below £50,000 at the time back in 1984, which was crazy. It was hugely successful, selling well enough in the UK that it grew into wider European and US markets, even if the level of luxury might not have been on par with other cars of the same mark. The engine on these is actually known to be pretty solid as it is a highly understressed block which is great news but again it's an old car so expect to run it as a classic. Land Rover Range Rover. It might be a bit of hassle to say and they might have a reputation for being hassle when they're old but from a luxury perspective these SUVs are pretty cool. They have the nickname Chelsea Wagon for a reason as they're a typical car for the wealthy here in the UK particularly new ones. The L322 or third generation Range Rover was that Chelsea wagon back when it was released in 2001, but now they're available from anywhere around the £2,000 mark for ratty old problematic examples, while around £7,000 what I'd expect to spend to get a reasonable example. It comes with multiple engine options, so pick one that most suits what you want out of it, but I personally think for the money, the 4.4 litre V8 is a pretty mental block, which puts out 305 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 8.3 seconds, using a ton of fuel in the process. If you get a nice spec on these, you're treated to a lovely luxurious interior and it was famously the queen's car for a very long time with plenty of pics of her out driving or being driven in it. Reliability on them as I mentioned can be very hit and miss though so do be wary and that 4.4 litre block I mentioned is actually from BMW with known o-ring seal issues. Mercedes is more a premium brand than specifically a luxury brand but the Mercedes S class has set the standard for how technologically advanced luxury cars should be for many years being Mercedes flagship model model and a real contender to the likes of Rolls Royce and Bentley but for a slightly wider market. The W220 was the fourth generation S class and though by today's standards its tech is ancient, at the time it was as groundbreaking as it was luxurious with an £85,000 price tag adjusted for inflation. Now however you can get these starting at around £1,500 and you'll still find a bunch of them sitting at under 3k, it's pretty incredible. Like some of the other cars
because on this list there are multiple engine options, but the cheapest tends to be the 320 CDI, which is a 3.2 litre inline six that makes 204 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.9 seconds. Two major advancements on this S-Class were the airmatic suspension, which gave the lovely soft ride, and the other option of active body control, which is an electronically controlled hydropneumatic suspension, which effectively eliminates body roll and makes the ride super comfortable. However, a major drawback is replacing either of those systems if they go wrong, as like other cars with air suspension on this list, it's much cheaper to swap them out for coilovers instead. Lexus are of course the luxury brand of Toyota, which is helpful in many ways as they are able to benefit from Toyota's mad wealth, as well as that great reputation for reliability. The GS300 comes from the S160 generation of GS Luxury Lexuses, and though it was pretty pricey on release, it's now available starting from around £1,500 with four grand getting you a 1990A model with reasonable mileage. These come with a 3-litre inline-six engine that makes 218 brake horsepower, which will get it to 60 in 7.9 seconds. I know I'm supposed to be talking about how luxurious this car is, and don't get me wrong, it is a cool luxury car for such a low price, but I really want to highlight one major thing about this car's engine. It's a 2JZ. Okay, granted, it's not the 2JZ in its most aggressive form, but it's still a 2JZ, and for those of you that know Toyota engine codes, I'm sure that'll make you all very happy. And though it does look a bit dated by today's standards, I think it's still a pretty cool car, particularly if you can get it cleaned up and looking fresh, as it harks back to an earlier time of Japan taking the luxury game to the Europeans. Lower ball joints are a known problem, but outside of that, 2JZ block is pretty good, as you'd expect out of a Toyota engine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are, a reminder, let me in the comments down below what your personal favourite luxury car brand, and please, for the love of all things, hit the like button as it really helps the old video out. We've already spoken about one British car in this video, so let's get on to another one from the same stable. The XJ is Jaguar's answer to the S-Class, offering a luxurious executive saloon that you could either drive or be driven in in huge comfort. It's another cheap one, coming in at £3,000 at the bottom end, with £4,000 nabbing you a 2004 example in good condition. Like the S-Class, there are many engine options available, and one possible choice is the 2.7 litre TD V6 that makes 204 brake horsepower and will manage 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds. This is the third gen XJ, though it actually comes from a longer lineage of full-size luxury Jaguars. It was more advanced than its elders though, with a clever unibody construction with aluminium to make it far lighter than it looks, and its body shell alone was 40% lighter and 50% stiffer than the previous generation, with an additional benefit of air suspension to make the ride even smoother. Inside it does look a bit like a smoking lounge, as this car kinda sat in the interim between design languages for the brand, so it's maybe not as swish as more modern XJs, but it's reminiscent of a different time for Jaguar, and I personally think it's pretty cool still. They're not hugely known for reliability though, and specifically overheating has plagued a few engine options. Compressors have a short lifespan as well, and like many other cars on this list, air suspension is known to go wrong. In fourth place, it's time to get an Audi on the list, and like Mercedes and Jaguar, though Audi isn't specifically a luxury brand, more a premium one, they have generally offered at least one luxury car in their lineup, and the Audi A8 has been that for quite some time. The D3 or second generation A8 sits on the same platform as two other high luxurious cars, the Bentley Continental Flying Spur and the VW Phaeton, and is cut from a similar cloth. I do think both of those cars are more luxurious by the way, but VW definitely isn't a luxury brand, so the Phaeton doesn't fit into this video, and I've already shown that Bentley 8 is a cheaper car than the Flying Spur. Speaking of price though, the A8 starts at around £2,000, and you'll find many examples sitting around the £5,000 mark. For that money you'll get a 3 litre TDI inline 6 block that produces 229 brake horsepower, taking the A8 to 60 in 7.6 seconds, not bad for a luxury car of its age and size. The car is focused on being comfortable for passengers while not neglecting the driver, with the design aiming to make the driving experience as easy and pleasurable as possible. It came with a bunch of innovations to make it as technologically advanced as it could be to threaten the S class and take some potential market share. The main two problems I could find with these are the air suspension suspension of course, and timing chain rattle, which is definitely not good. Cadillac is one of the luxury car manufacturers that falls under the General Motors umbrella, and most of the cars it produces are focused on the US market. This means the cars are bigger, more spacious, and to an extent a little bit more flashy than some of the cars you might get out of Europe, but when it comes to luxury, that's definitely not a bad thing. The Cadillac Escalade is an SUV that we never got here in the UK, but they are surprisingly popular as an import, and you can get into them starting anywhere from around the 14,000 pounds region to around 18,000 pounds if you're willing to go for one from the
from the mid 2000s and early 2010s. The best thing about the Escalades in my opinion is that 6.2 litre V8 block that makes a whopping 403 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 6.6 seconds which is pretty mental for a car that weighs in excess of 2.5 tons. I would say the interiors on these are sort of like an American take on a Range Rover with large comfortable seats, inbuilt entertainment like TV screens etc and a ton of space between each person. It also has cool stuff like heated and cooled cup holders, tri-zone climate control and equivalent to make all six occupants as comfortable as possible. There are no electrical and build quality issues with these though like the door handles breaking and in the UK it won't be a simple job to work on the 6.2 litre V8 block if it goes wrong. Maserati are not only a luxury car brand but an exotic one too which means that they often like to merge their luxury and sporty sides together to make cars like the Gran Turismo which is more sporty but still luxurious. The Quattroporte is an excellent example of the opposite being a luxury first sports saloon that was a six figure car when new adjusted for inflation. That's a stark contrast to today where it costs just £9,000 at the bottom end with most decent examples sitting around the £13,000 mark. It comes with a Ferrari 4.2 litre V8 engine that produces 394 brake horsepower and will manage 0-60 in 5 seconds, pretty rapid for any luxury car of its age. It's actually the 5th generation Quattroporte and is very different to previous generations with that greater focus on luxury, but with that in mind a lot of thought was put into making the interior a lovely place to be with nice Italian leather and quality materials used throughout. It lacks some of the additional functionality you might like out of a Bentley or a Rolls Royce but that can be excused for how sporty it is with that beautiful sounding Ferrari engine block. That block isn't actually too bad on reliability though problems can be expensive. Build quality is also pretty good too thanks to the collab with Ferrari, instead it's the electricals that sometimes let these down so something to be wary of. Taking the top spot is a car that probably doesn't deserve to be on this list as it is by no means cheap but that being said there are absolutely no Maybachs that are objectively cheap, it simply isn't a thing. The Maybach 57 starts at around £40,000 second hand and is generally found at around £55,000 so significantly more than any other other car on this list but the level of luxury is also significantly more as are the general prices of new cars now that the brand sits under the Mercedes flag. When new these were around £280,000 which adjusted for inflation is over £420,000 which means you're getting into one today for 10% of the original price which when you put it that way is pretty insane. That said please someone tell me who has £50,000 burning enough of a hole in their pocket that they decide to buy a 20 year old Maybach. Ignoring that question for a moment though, these come with a crazy 5.5 litre twin turbocharged V12 that produces 542 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, matching the Maserati. Maybach's goal with the 57 and longer 62 was to make a car that would rival the Rolls Royce Phantom, and I think they did that, as both are named ultra luxury cars today thanks to some ridiculous features like the champagne fridge between the rear seats, the TVs and the folding tables to work on, the highest quality materials available, and even in some cases bulletproof glass and an internal microphone with an external speaker so you can shout at poor people outside the car. Maintenance will be expensive though so do be careful you don't end up like one of those poor people as well. So what do you think of my 10 picks? I'd love to hear more in the comments down below as well as knowing what your personal favourite luxury car brand is and yeah definitely let me know who would actually buy that Maybach for 50 grand. You got 50 grand in your account are you buying that Maybach or not? Anyways it was a massive thanks to the patrons for their support and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen!